The second stop on the PJ East Order of Merit series is Essendon Country Club. For this, the PJ East Region Championship and hosted by a club run on distinct and elegant lines. Team in charge come with real pedigree in both golf, Elaine Ratcliffe is a former Curtis Cup player, and from top-class corporate service and hospitality. Before I was very much involved in, in the transport and the corporate world, so a lot of the principles in that, in that situation we can bring into golf. Um, you know, it's very much a committee-led environment golf, so we've, we've taken a bit more of a business approach on it. But uh, that's not to say that we don't, we don't do what we think is right for us. And you know, the principle that we've held here, the vision is very much to create a club that we'd want to be a member of. Um, that we want to come down and socialise with and, and have a good atmosphere as much as anything else. So we brought those principles of, of service um, and of value to, to, the, to the club. It was tricky at first because obviously it was what we'd inherited and it was seeing the vision through the, the, the clutter, shall we say. But really it, it, it was just a wonderful opportunity. And we've had, when we took it over, we had 280 members and we're now up to sort of 780 members. So we've added 500 members in, in the two and a half years that we've had it. But uh, it's not about adding membership, it's about adding value to, to the membership they're already here. Yeah, it's been good fun. It's been challenging, hard work, but uh, it's been good fun. I've played a lot of golf over the years, so it's been lovely to be the other side of a golf course and, and trying to build something quite special here. And, and finally, I mean, you must be very proud because I don't, I don't know what it was like when you took it over, but you've really sort of revived it. Yeah, and again, it was, it was a club that was dying a little bit. Nobody knew about it and it was quite, um, it was quite difficult to get onto this particular course. So we've opened it up, we've renovated the clubhouse, which again, which goes with, goes with the range. We've, we've spent a lot of money on renovating the course in terms of the greens. Um, so that's something that, you know, we've, we've made a significant investment in the club and we'll continue to do so over the next sort of five to 10 years. A real aim is to create a flourishing junior family and ladies membership. We've been really proactive regarding families. Um, we want to grow the ladies section, mums, wives, um, um, children, and also the juniors as well. Um, and part of that we're offering, you know, offering a lot of lessons for both ladies and juniors. And then we've started to offer the creche as well, where parents can come up and play and the children, depending on what age, can take junior lessons or be entertained. And then they can all come back and have a nice family, family lunch. And do you think that's something that's lacking in other clubs? Um, I certainly think the family aspect is lacking in other clubs. Most golf clubs can be um, quite narrow-minded how they view uh, children. Um, they, they just look after what's in front of them. And I think we're trying to, there's a lot of other sports out there that people can play and we'd like to see golf as something that a family can do. There's very few sports that you can play of differing standard at the same time. So it would be lovely to see families up here playing, enjoying playing the game um, and, and the golf club and golf growing. Plans for the future make way for deeds right now on the Essendon New Course. Among the field, the winner of the first Order of Merit event, Glenn Portelli from the Verulam Golf Club. And going into the second round, the leaderboard sees a three-way tie at the top, with four underpar rounds after day one from Mark Davis from Thornton Park. There's Mark Baker, the Colchester Pro, and Chris Barron from West Essex. Over down to the short game. And, uh, which is part of the game that I've been working on a little bit more. So yeah, I'm quite pleased actually with the way it's going. Yeah, I'm confident of playing well. So you know, you never know with golf. So the links of uncertainty. So until you get out there, but hopefully it'll be a good day. There are two courses at Essendon: the old and the new. But there aren't just 36 holes of golf. The new course is famous for the choice of two greens on several holes, an idea brought here by previous owners from Japan. I think we're unique, uh, definitely in the UK, and I think it spreads as far as in, in Europe as well. And what's the big benefit? Um, I think from a golfer's perspective is that um, we can offer a, effectively three golf courses here. Um, we are actually 36 holes, but um, we've got three sets of greens. Uh, and on the, the course that we've got two greens, obviously we can uh, switch and change them even throughout the week, uh, throughout the year. Um, and the course plays completely different with, with, with the different greens. And when improvements are needed, there's that matter-of-fact way that most every greenkeeper explains their massive workload. Um, we've just actually relayed the, the, the B greens. Um, uh, this year we had a coro in. Uh, which took the surface off down to 75mm. Uh, we put 20 tonnes of sand into each green then, motivated that in. 
um, and levelled it, put another 20 tonnes in, got it up to playing levels, uh, reseeded it, and we're just going through the growing phase now. And is there ever any confusion about landing on the wrong green? Um, not really. I mean, we do have a flag that, that indicates each green, but obviously golfer standards, we do stray wide sometimes and uh, end up on the wrong green. But uh, no, no confusion at the moment. And with so much green to work with on the new course, one of the key shot-saving tips is the bump and run. Ian Taylor gives us the key techniques. Yeah, so the bump and run shot is really, uh, it's a shot that spends about 20% in the air and about 80% along the ground. Uh, it's a shot that, you know, when the ball's lower to the ground, you do have that little bit more control over the shot. So, providing you don't need to go over anything, it's a great shot to use. Um, what we look for is we look to, to get the sole of the club flat on the floor, get the, the shaft leaning forward, and really get the, the straighter face club, such as a, an 8 or a, a 7 iron, hitting down into the back of the ball, which just rises it ever so slightly and just lets it run out to the flag. Like many golf courses, you need a certain array of shots. The best players in the world have, have many strings to their bow. Um, and being able to play a high shot, a mid-flighted shot and a low shot is, is good for your armory to be able to hit all the shots out on the golf course that you're faced with. Chipping's, chipping's key. Um, when you're chipping well, it takes the pressure off your long game. You don't need to hit every green, um, but also it takes the pressure off your putting. When you're chipping the ball close to the hole, it makes, certainly makes putting a lot easier. What I like to get my players doing is, is with that shot, just leaning into the shot ever so slightly. And then the key there is just to keep your weight very static. What we see a lot of golfers do is they put their weight forward and then they try and you know, lift the ball up into the air. Just let the club do what it's designed to do. Get down into the back of the ball and just keep your weight forward and just keep it there. Well, out on the course, it's Jason Lievermore from the Channels Golf Club who's using just those skills to put yet another effective round of golf together. He'll be three under for the day and the tournament posting a score which will be just one shot off the eventual shake-up. Round of the day, well that goes to Ian Ellis. He burst through the field at Bishop Stortford and he was on another charge at Essendon, this time posting a six under round of 66. For his two rounds, that would be the clubhouse lead at four under. The great Yarmouth and Case the Professional finishing with a birdie, with Caddy Dylan Green, the high fives and smiles for the season's best one round score in the order of merit so far. Following the huge reaction to our mic'd up sequence last time, at Essendon, it's the PGA's captain himself, Paul Hedrington. Round two will become damage limitation. We're eavesdropping on the art of humour, positive thinking, and never saying die. Just coming out of it so far. <laughs> no, not, he's, uh, not made a good start, but uh, no, long way to go. We'll get it back. A little ridge to come down there. Yeah, no, no. no. Yeah. No. No. If you land it beyond that slope, then you're going to be going away. Yeah, just a little bump into that. Just to the left of that dark mark there, mate. Always right, Rosie. Huh. Very quick, mate, over it. Then I'll slow down a bit. Very quick over it. I think it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a, a, a cup and a half left of the coin. Go on then. Read, the, read it properly that time. Oh no, you didn't, Nicky. Yeah, no, you can't make double down here as well. No. Take your time. Just so quick. You're getting over it, isn't it? Just walk away, take your time. Picture it again in your head.
It's uphill, mate. Yeah. No, I'm not. But, yeah, I know. But if a yard pulls the hole, it shoots very quickly. He's got to come off the right down. Oh, Okay. You'll bump in left of it, yeah. Just try and let it release down of the hole. Go on in, go on in. Hold on. Well done. Damage limitations. Huh? Exactly. Yep. Well <clears throat> Damage limitation there, James, when that, when that lie was. Yeah, nice to get it on the green. Right, I've got it. <laughs> Don't know why I bother coming. Mind you, I could probably play better than him, to be fair. Just for the camera, I'm doing the back nine. <laughs> but by the 18th, it's a team finish for two good friends. The finishing hole was also pivotal in the outcome of the event. Darren Charlton was also coming with a late burst. Six birdies in an unblemished round coming to the 18th green. But the Dunstable Downs Pro would come unstuck. The Order of Merit winner back in 2005 would have to settle for a four under par return in the clubhouse. Mark Hooper's best work had been done in round one, but he was still sub par at the last. This par putt would give the Rayleigh man the outright lead. But the 18th was becoming a monster for the leaders. The par four would yield the most bogeys or worse on this day out of any of the holes. So three joint leaders now in the clubhouse. One left with chances. Three birdies on the back nine. Mark Baker in a strong position to take the winner's check. But the 18th would bite back yet again. Bunker shot to eight feet. The Colchester player couldn't convert. The third player who needed par to win out right at the last and fail. So, four to tee it up in a sudden death playoff. And at the first extra hole, Ian Ellis with the advantage. His approach, the pick of the bunch. Both he and another sudden death contender, Mark Cooper, are the duo who've been through the toughest test already this year at the BMW PGA Championship at Wentworth. And Hooper is still having the time of his life. In the top 40 at the star-studded Wentworth event at the end of May, now, 35 feet navigated at Essendon in June. Only Ellis and his putt stood between him and the winner's check. Failing to drop, it was Hooper's victory in emphatic style. Superb goal for ours was 71-69, 140, minus four, and a great birdie on the first playoff hole. Representing the Rayleigh Club, Mark Hooper. It looked good all the way and I was kind of going down to my knees just praying it's going to stay on line and it did so yeah, yeah brilliant, great, really happy. So the greens are so good here, um, you know, really fast and, and true, they have been. Um, 
that you, you know if you start it online then you've got a good chance so the fact that you know I see it halfway on, online I just you know you just you're just praying it's going to do that all the way down one of your best bits I would say it's probably under circumstances yeah probably my, the best part I've ever hit I would say just to the fact that in a playoff you know you're not expecting to hold um, you know a 35 foot putt really so uh, yeah, yeah over the moon